One of the coolest things about Starfield is that almost every type of playstyle is possible. There are lots of skills that let you go in guns blazing, become one with the shadows and hunt for critical hits, or manipulate and talk your way out of every situation. Skills in Starfield become increasingly stronger the more you rank them up, so today we'll take a look at some of the best, of course, free of any spoilers. And while we're going to focus a bit more on damage in this video, keep in mind that you're absolutely free to play your own way. Now, there are 82 skills in Starfield split between 5 distinct categories, each with 4 distinct tiers that will progressively unlock as you spend more points in them. So you will need to spend 3 points into a category to unlock tier 2, 7 for tier 3 and finally 11 to unlock tier 4. As you level up and gain additional skill points, you can then spend them to unlock new skills but also to rank them up and make them a lot more powerful, even gain new effects up to a maximum of rank 4 for each skill. So that's quite a lot of levels but we're going to focus on some of the strongest beginning with the physical skill tree. So the physical tree has probably the highest concentration of really good and useful skills in all aspects of the game, especially in combat. If you want unarmed damage or super high health regen, even better ways to jump and maneuver around the environment or gain an insane boost to stealth, this has all of that and more. Starting with the tier 1 fitness, a more straightforward unlock, this is basically going to provide you more oxygen levels, and oxygen kinda acts like your stamina, you don't really want to run out of that too much, and almost every single action will cost oxygen, especially if you want to sprint around or charge up powerful melee attacks, this is going to be what you need. And every single rank provides an additional 10% increase in the oxygen levels available, up to a maximum of 30%. But at rank 4, this is going to further make sprinting and power attacks to use significantly less oxygen, so especially for the sprinting, it's going to be very useful. But then we have the stealth skill, and this is going to be yet another Bethesda game in which stealthy characters are absolutely busted. So ranking this up is going to provide you with a stealth meter, it's going to make you 25% more difficult to detect at level 1, and it's also going to make your suppressed weapon damage to do an additional 5% sneak attack damage. Every single rank up will provide an increase of 25% to that detection difficulty and a 5% to the sneak attack damage. So by rank 4, you will be 100% more difficult to detect and your suppressed weapons will deal 20% additional damage. But you also get another advantage, which is the fact that opening up doors will no longer alert enemies if you do so while in stealth mode. So you can just sneak around the base a lot easier so enemies do not detect you. But you can truly skyrocket your sneak damage and bring that stealthiness to the true next level by getting the tier 4 concealment in the same skill tree. So just that rank 1 alone, you no longer set off enemy mines, and not just that, your ranged sneak attacks now deal 2.5 normal damage, meanwhile your melee sneak attacks do 4 times the normal damage. Which is absolutely busted, and it only goes even more up in damage the more you rank up concealment. So by rank 4, your ranged attacks now deal 4 times the normal damage, meanwhile your melee sneak attacks deal 10 times the normal damage. Besides, at rank 2 you get running while sneaking, which is not going to deactivate stealth anymore. At rank 3 you gain a chameleon-like ability that's going to make you completely blend with the shadows and avoid enemy detection. And by rank 4, if you engage in stealth, it's going to cause distant enemies to completely lose track of you. Now, of course, there are other great skills here too, like wellness to boost up your HP, even more ways to increase your carry capacity and resistance to stagger. But those are pretty self-explanatory and you will just know when you need to grab them depending on what type of gameplay you want. Probably the one you should pay special attention here would be the tier 2 gymnastics because this is going to let you unlock a combat slide, it's also going to reduce the fall damage when you need to, even stabilize you a lot more in 0G and there are quite a few moments when you will fight with enemies in 0G. And not just that, by rank 4 you can further increase your jump height, run faster after combat sliding and it's going to help you a ton to be a lot more mobile, especially since we're going to invest in the next skill tree and that brings us to the tech skills. So this is going to focus a lot more on the technology you can install on your character, on your ship to improve your piloting skills, but also to manipulate and hack into security systems. However, probably the best must-have unlocks here is the boost pack training. This is what's going to give you that jetpack that you can use to just maneuver around the environment, 
jump to new heights even like just makes it better for exploration so rank one is going to let you utilize that so you will probably want to rank this up to level two so that it consumes less fuel rank three so that it regenerates fuel more quickly and then finally rank four is going to double all of these bonuses so that you can use your boost pack much more often and for much much longer Another very useful ship here, especially for those who do plan to use ships extensively, is piloting. So this is going to let you use those ship thrusters, increase the maneuverability of your ship, and even have the ability to pilot higher class ships than the ones you get by default. There's also security, however, so there are quite a lot of locks in this game that you might want to unlock and break into, maybe access a new area or open up a container. So security is going to help you a ton with that. This is going to let you attempt hack advanced locks and also provide additional auto attempts for each rank up that you get. So you can progressively unlock more difficult locks like advanced, expert and finally master level, even expand digipigs to eliminate keys that aren't required to solve the puzzle. From here on out, it's all about the ship upgrades that you really want depending how deep you want to go into like space piracy or space fights. So you can upgrade various subsystems such as shields, engines, different weapon types depending on your choice. Heck, you can even install experimental ship modules via starship design and become better at repairing your ship depending on the choices you make. Now, the third one is the combat skill tree. This provides more specialized bonuses to different types of weaponry, especially in the first couple of tiers. So if you really enjoy ballistic weapons, for example, or melee, the more advanced versions of laser, particle, EM, and heavy weaponry, and everything else in between, this is the place to grab them. However, tier 3 and 4 is when you can grab the really powerful, more blanket type effects that affect all areas of your combat. So for example, tier 3 has marksmanship. This makes your weapons a lot more lethal with an increase to critical shots. So the first tiers right here will increase your critical chance with non-automatic ranged weapons by 3, then 8, and then 15%. However, by rank 4, this is the one that you really want because critical hits using non-automatic ranged weapons without a scope do double damage and those with scopes will knock down enemies on the next shot. So you play a stealthy James Bond kind of character that plays with a silenced pistol, you're going to get absurd amounts of damage against enemies. Or if you use a rifle instead with a scope, you can just pin down enemies on your next shot and keep them busy that way. Then we have rapid reloading. This is just going to be useful for every type of weapon to not stay there and wait too much to shoot again. So ballistic, energy, EM, particle beams all get a 30% faster reload speed with this. But at rank 4, you have a chance on hitting enemies to increase your reload speed for all weapons by 50% for 15 seconds, which is absolutely insane. Now at tier 4 we have two more very strong abilities that can further build up from that stealthy gameplay but it can literally also work for any type of gunplay. So one of them is armor penetration and this just makes your attacks to ignore a percentage of your target's armor up to 50% at rank 3. However, at rank 4, when you score critical hits, it's going to further debuff your enemy's armor by another 25% for 6 seconds. This further synergizes very well with sharpshooting, another tier 4 skill here, which is going to just make critical hits deal more damage and even increase the chance for you to do critical hits. So rank 1, 2 and 3 progressively increase your critical damage for headshots, for enemy legs and finally all critical damage by rank 3 when you use ranged weapons. However, by rank 4 when you defeat an enemy with a ranged critical hit, you're going to increase your critical chance by another 25% for 20 seconds. So that's going to make it pretty much a complete build with everything we just talked about and like just get insane damage numbers plus a lot of benefits to debuff your enemies at the same time. Of course, you don't have to go in guns blazing. As I've said, there are many ways to play and this brings us to the social skill tree. So this is going to give you a lot of ways to manipulate others through the power of speech, gain or even craft extra resources and obtain different bonuses for your companions when they are with you. So if you like a non-combat approach, you can boost your chances to persuade others, but you can also have more nuanced options. Say for example, you want to make enemies completely stop attacking you, you have diplomacy. Or make them flee in fear from you, you of course have intimidation and you also have instigation if you want to make them attack their own allies. This is also where you can become a bit better at piracy with the deception tier 2 skill because this is going to make it possible for you to 
automatically make ships much higher in level than you to basically surrender to your piracy demands and it's going to also make enemy contraband scans to become less efficient a lot less efficient actually if you go to rank 4 which is going to reduce that by half basically but two other skills here that could work with a more wider range of builds could be isolation the tier 2 one so this assumes you prefer a more solo approach to combat being a lone wolf kind of playstyle. So each rank gives extra damage and damage resistance for each spacesuit and helmet equipped as long as you don't have a companion or crew with you. So by rank 4 you will do 30% more weapon damage and you will gain a 60 damage resistance for each space suit and helmet equipped when you don't have any companion or crew nearby so if you want to plan with this route you can even use this with the introvert trait and basically get a lot less oxygen consumption when you go in alone which can be quite useful we also have the tier 3 outpost management so resources are going to be extremely important here to craft additional ships to craft additional items even like suits and weapons weapon mods and so on so the tier 3 outpost management can boost how much you gain from the resources you can extract if you go with that route. So rank 1, 2 and 3 just helps you a lot with having additional cargo, robots and even crew to be assigned at your outpost. However, rank 4 is going to make outpost extractors to produce twice as fast of the resources they extract so it can be quite helpful for that type of gameplay so if you're planning to dive really deep into outpost gameplay and create a ton of outposts all around the galaxy then you can also pick and combine this with the outpost engineering from the science skill tree so this is going to let you construct improved outpost modules and even research additional modules at the research lab eventually this is going to let you construct other cutting edge modules that you cannot get otherwise and even like make them cost a lot less resources by about 50% at rank 4. And this brings us to the fifth and final skill tree, the science. This is going to help us a ton with space exploration, planetary scans and resource collecting, but can also boost our research projects to gain improved crafting recipes. So at tier 2, we can already unlock two very powerful crafting related abilities called space to design and weapon engineering, which is going to let us craft cutting edge spacesuits and master level weapon mods. So the first one, this is self-explanatory, we can craft higher and higher grade spacesuit and helmets as well as pack mods that will help us a ton to provide additional abilities with our spacesuits. You can level this up just to rank 3 and get the cutting edge variants to craft, however you can also bring this to rank 4 and occasionally not have a cost of resources when crafting them. Maybe keep that point for the weapon engineering because this is going to give access all the way up to master level crafting of weapon mods. So you can craft improved weapon mods as a weapon workbench and even research additional weapon mods as a research lab. And the more you rank this up all the way up to 4, eventually you can research and craft master level weapon mods which are going to be much more powerful than anything else. And like I said, with the outpost building, if you really want to dive deep into that type of gameplay, Science Skill Tree has one more ability here called Planetary Habitation. This doesn't just increase the total max outpost you can build, which at rank 4 would be 16, but also the types of planets you can place them on. So you can now build them on extreme pressure, gravity, and so on. These types of planets that you normally cannot and would otherwise need other ways to navigate. So yeah, lots more content like this coming up for Starfield on the channel. Again, we're also doing that giveaway. So if you want to stay up to date with everything regarding the game, totally make sure you subscribe, leave a like on this video and activate the notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next video.